Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Green Zero back here again with another Command & Conquer 3 Kane's Wrath video commentary. That's right, fresh from the Kane's Wrath World Championships, which is wrapped up. Spoiler alert, because I'm going to tell you the winner if you haven't watched anything. It's Master Leaf. Master Leaf has won the World Championship, of course. If you haven't been paying attention, it's been all over my channel for the last, like, three weeks or month or so. But uh, well done to uh, Master Leaf there. Uh, in other news, though, of course, we're moving on. We're, we're going past the, the World Championship. Has gone down in history. Is extremely successful. I'll bring another... I'll bring, like, a Q&A video or something like that, or maybe a discussion video later on, just to chat how, how that went. Maybe behind the scenes or something like that. If you guys are interested... We'll see how that goes. A lot of FPV footage I can play for that as well. But uh, nonetheless, we're back to normal Kane's Wrath. We haven't got any tournaments, of course. Taking a break now. Uh, Game Replays, I believe, is hosting a tournament. Uh, let me have a look here. Maybe next weekend. Not too sure. Uh, head on over to Game Replays if you want to check out their tournament. I believe they have a slight cash prize for that one. But uh, nonetheless, uh, other news. Uh, I've hit 1 million views on YouTube. That's right. A million views for Kane's Wrath. <laughs> It's like uh, something the StarCraft 2 commentators get in like a few days, but uh, nonetheless, that's a huge achievement for considering the, the community that we have. So a million views, reached it, <laughs> beat that side, but uh, he'll probably get a million views, a views sooner or later. I think he's about halfway there, but uh, nonetheless, uh, you probably don't want to hear me talk any longer. we got a game here, and of course, uh, more news, of course, R9 has come out, which is a new version of the patch. Tweaked a few things, but mainly brought us some new maps, and I will try to bring you some footage from those. It's about three new 1v1 maps, or maybe four. And there's a couple of new 2v2 maps, and they've done a few free-for-alls in uh, 4, 4v4 and 3v3 maps uh, that they've turned into 1.02+. plus. So, um, again, head on over to Kane's Wrath Online, get the patch, because you're going to need it. Future tournament's going to be played in it. But anyway, this is on R9, 1.02+. plus. We have Cyberstorm and Hydraulic teaming up here to take on Panic and Andre. So, let's see how that goes. Again, that was a pretty big intro. There was a lot to say. Kane's Wrath World Championship, million views on YouTube, and, of course, uh, the, the new version of the patch. And people are still uh, a little bit concerned about the game spy shutdown, which could be happening on May 31st. While actually more than likely, it's becoming more and more realistic now. It's probably gonna we're probably gonna lose our servers. Uh, maybe they'll save them. Not quite sure. We'll have to wait and see what happens. Nonetheless, we have got alternatives. But let's concentrate on this game because that's still a while away. And uh, it looks like uh, purple is gonna be hydraulic. And marked of Kane down here is gonna be uh, cyberstorm or the red marked of Kane is gonna be cyberstorm. Hydraulic has steel talons. He's going out. He's going for. Is he going for both these spikes? No. Hydraulic must have an engineer somewhere. Um, I think Hydraulic just didn't go on. Oh, no, yeah, it looks like Hydraulic went double engineer. And over here, we have Andre, I'm pretty sure, plays as green. Yes, it's Andre playing as green. So he's dealt... Oh, actually, Panic's dealt a, uh, a Steel Talons faction. So uh, Panic, Steel Talons, and uh, Andre is going to be Black Hand. So Black Hand combined with Steel Talons, that's pretty nasty. Uh, it's going to be a, a lot of brute force from Steel Talons with that, that crushing infantry power of Black Hand, which makes up for Steel Talons not having the greatest infantry around. In fact, they've got the worst infantry in the game, uh, to be honest, or maybe Reaper has. Not quite sure how that's gonna go down. But uh, nonetheless, both sides scanning each other. Whoa, Panic uh, is going for a airfield strat. He's going for an Orca Rush. It's interesting, we're on 2v2 uh, Forgotten Forest, in case you haven't realized. I have brought games on this map before. He's going for an Orca Rush. I'm assuming Andre's gonna join in. Yeah, he's got a he's got a buggy to try to stop scouts from the other guys from getting in. I'm not sure if Cyberstorm has built uh, a buggy or if, uh, yeah, it looks like they haven't got anything. Uh, he's got scouts down. Scout, they got scouts here, but they're going to get hit. I mean, if, even if they go through the middle with those orcas, they're still going to get hit by uh, these guys here. Panic has uh, got three orcas now. Uh, two of them aren't there, but I'm pretty sure that's just a replay glitch that will reappear uh, momentarily uh, once he gets the fourth one out. Unless he's already sent them. Okay, maybe he has sent them out, uh, and I'm just seeing things. But uh, I'm not sure where he sent them out. He's sent two somewhere, and he's got two there, so... We'll have to see what he's going to do with those. Not following up with anything else. He's got a war factory down. He sold the comm center by the looks of things. Andre going for bikes. But again, he actually flew up here, which was probably the worst spot. That's going to give him the, the biggest amount of heads up. And Hydraulic sees it. He knows. Actually, he's already getting attacked. So um, yeah, Panic split his in half. Um, again, he got one harvester. And it uh, looks like Hydraulic's going for MRTs as well. That's interesting. So he doesn't actually have as much economy as he really needs to. And he's going to lose this other harvester as well. He actually sells his MCV. So sells his MCV. And that harvester is as good as dead. Panic has just taken out all of uh, all of Hydraulic's economy. He's going to head over here. He's probably going to get himself a bike kill. And nice work. Just one rocket on the bike. So no overkill there. Uh, put some shots on that harvester. Because uh, not harvesters, when they're docking, they're not stealth. And he even gets another one. So that's nice. Uh, Hydraulic is in all sorts of trouble. He's got nothing. He's trying to build a uh, 
a harvester, but he's got MITs. Obviously trying to go for that MIT into V35 perhaps, but those V35s are just not going to happen now. These MITs are in all sorts of trouble. There's bikes here they can kite. They can try to snipe the front one down. Is he gonna get the, uh, the rockets out? No, he doesn't get the rockets out. He, that's perfect by Andre. Just put enough rockets on to kill it. I uh, did lose a few units here. The MITs are going to self repair. There's actually another one here as well. I can't even see what's in them because obviously there's no spot there, but we can tell that it looks like they're all loaded with rockets by the, the looks of things here. And Panic, he's just doing fine. He's got a Titan out for defense. He's got uh, Orcas flying around all over the place. And uh, and looks like Hydraulic's just going to chill back here just momentarily. He needs to do something or, or at least force a lot more units out because he's got a long way to recover. He's only got one Harvester out. He's almost got a second now. Remember, he does have two spikes, so that's going to assist him. And he's got two Harvesters back. That's nice. It looks like Hydraulic went for expansion, double War Factory, but there's bikes down here from Andre and bikes here from Hydraulic, not Hydraulic, sorry, from Cyberstorm. And they're going to clash. They are going to clash and it gets messy. It always does when bikes uh, attack other bikes. And it looks like Andre is just going to lose purely by the fact that he doesn't have... Oh, geez, wasting rockets on the, the Conyard there by Panic. That was not a good use of ammo. He's going to he's going to pay for it with one Orca, but he does help Andre actually win this fight. So Orcas turn it around for him. There's still more bikes here, and the reinforcements are continuous here from uh, from uh, from Cyberstorm because literally he's got he's got his units just there. But yeah, a few rockets on that Conyard. Probably not the best place to shoot those. I'm not sure what happened to the MITs. Whether they got pulled back. They are over here. They trying to flank these uh, Orcas here. He's still got ammo for them if he's flying around out here. Otherwise, there's really no reason for him to be here. And all he needs to watch out. And he's actually going to turn around and he's going to try to take on these bikes. And oh, geez, nice split there. Nice split. One rocket for every bike. That was really good. Really well done here. But I think he's going to pay for it with another Orca. But he just cleans up so many bikes. That Orca was amazing, cost effective. Remember, Orcas are $1,100. Bikes are $600. So you kill two bikes, you've already made more than enough money uh, on that Orca. But again, Panic did open with the airfield. So he needs to do enough damage to make up for the comm center and the fact that he built the airfield and the loss of economy, which he has done. He's got four times here. Pretty powerful, of course. Uh, at this stage in the game uh, when considering that neither side really has an army at all and look at this he still went for the comm center and he's still going to go for the fly flying b35s now andre if he keeps going bikes um again actually it's not going to be too bad because ox can take a, a, a decent amount i mean more than an orca and a hammerhead or more than a hammerhead at least it's almost got the health of a firehawk i reckon uh, the B-35, there's bikes obviously trading over here, but again, that's exactly what they're doing, they're just trading. Uh, Cyberstorm is keeping Andre's numbers down, Andre's keeping Cyberstorm's numbers down. We have, no, it's just a scout over there, nothing serious. More bikes coming for Cyberstorm. These guys trying to focus each other down. It looks like Cyberstorm actually has enough bikes here to overwhelm this uh, this position uh, or, or scare Andre away. Even takes out the buggy there and he's gonna turn it around, so nice work there. Tower's coming up now, uh, pretty much because he has to. I mean, towers are nice, and it's really no point even trying to destroy them because they're just so cost effective. But again, the tower takes a little while to actually wear the bikes down. So uh, he's going to have to spend some time getting those. And I think Cyberstorm just doesn't have enough bikes left. He's too, too low on health. He's not going to get a harvester. And he's going to lose the rest of these bikes here. There's something happening over here. The V35s are actually coming down. They snipe down a harvester. Oh man, I can't believe Panic. I guess he didn't realize he was going to go for this. I thought he was going to try to recover. There is another harvester here from Panic. He's sending to the blue field again. But uh, Hydraulic, if he's paying attention, he can easily cut that off. He's going to fly over and he realizes, hey, look, that's there. The Titans are trying to move through. They're not even going to go back to base. I mean, really, how can they? They're not going to make it back to base. And oh man, Panic all of a sudden has just been uh, ripped to pieces there. That's a pretty big loss for him. Two harvesters and now four Titans. Uh, going down here and these V-35s and again the rocket squads are going to rank up and they're just going to be that much better as well I need to make sure he cleans them all up because one Titan gets into this base it could crush these harvesters and he should have enough to finish it off far out he's oh geez <laughs> look at that the very last rocket so Andre uh, not sorry hydraulic uh, feeling just fine and Panic's going to lose another harvester oh man Panic opened this game very well but now his losses are starting to mount a little bit. He, he's been, in the last 30 seconds, uh, heavily crippled. We got battle markers out here as well. It looks like Orcas now being destroyed. Oh man, Panic has just completely lost his footing in this game. He lost his harvesters, he's lost all his times, and his, his Orcas in the space of less than a minute. And now he's gonna even lose another harvester. Oh man, Andre is shaking his fist now, going, what are you doing, buddy? He needs to uh, recover out of this position now. So uh, finally, he's, he's been left alone. I mean. Uh, Panic has been trying to push these harvesters pretty hard. He's got a lot still here. There's still three here, so he's really been pushing it. There is a bike attack down, down here. Doing my best to try to keep the, an eye on all the action. Andre, though, is looking pretty good with his bike buggy, but of course, here come the V35s. And again, once these rockets start to rank, which they're pretty, they must be pretty high now, the buggies aren't going to have too much of a problem with these V35s. Probably not going to be able to shoot them down, but uh, they can tank them all day. And uh, 
What's happening over here? The V35 is still flying around. He's got six of them. This is allowing Hydraulic to really recover. Look at that. He's got four and two on this middle base here. That is big trouble for these guys. And Hydraulic and Cyberstorm. Oh, he's got heroic rockets in here now. And that's not what you want to see in those V35s. Again, with the MRT that's self-repairing. I mean, if you think of this, this is a three-unit combination. The V35 is only $200. They're actually really, really cheap. Uh, $200 for those, $700 for the MRT, and $400 for the, for the uh, Rocket Squad, so it's eleven. It's $1,300 each, so it's actually cheaper. It's cheaper than a hammerhead to have one of these guys rolling around, and they self-repair. They have more health, I reckon. They've got about as much health as the Firehawk. This is not good, though. He could be paying for it with the V-35s. Three of them in the red health. Is he going to get away? Oh, my God. He gets away. He gets away. It looks like Cyberstorm is there to help clean up as well. Oh, man, that was clutch from Hydraulic. And he even gets back across the uh, the rift here as well. Well, again, the, the river, if you like, it is uh, Forgotten Forest, as not named really after this waterway at all. But oh man, those those uh, units now very heavily ranked, and Hydraulic is just keeping those around. They are really coming in handy for him now, really making them pay off. Didn't think it'd work in a two v two to be honest, but it's actually doing quite well now. Uh, Panic has managed to go all the way to his tech. Looks like he's going for rail guns. A good way to go. Again, he has really pushed these harvesters again to, to recover. He's got some base defenses here, so he's probably not going to be out. He's probably not going to be attacked anytime soon. Uh, looks like uh, looks like Cyberstorm is just really pushing the bike. Still, he hasn't got any tech uh, to speak of at all. He really hasn't got a tier two, so I don't know. He might get left behind in this in this engagement here. A lot of times coming out from Hydraulic. Does he have a comm center? No, he doesn't have a comm center. And these guys are going to be just super aggressive. They don't even care about tech. They're just going to come back in again. And Panic just has nothing here to defend. He's going to lose two harvesters straight away. They're there are Firehawks here. Oh, there's Firehawks. And he tries to land. He tries to land the, the V-35s. He lands two of them. And oh, man. And I think a Firehawk may have been shot down. And now he's on the ground. And these MRTs are going to keep going now. Remember, they can just recall those V-35s back if they need to. Yeah, it's going to cost another 200 bucks. Tungsten is done. Wow, he got Tungsten instead of Railguns. Didn't see that. And it looks like this is Andre's force. He's going to finally clean up these MRTs. Doesn't manage to de-garrison any of them at all. Two of them actually still survive. They're still down here. And a beacon comes back by panic saying, hey, you got to clean this up. I don't want these hanging around. He's going to lose one more buggy. He's going to be able to bail these out, but no, that's going to be the end of that. And really, Firehawks is the end of that. I mean, what can you do? Looks like uh, he's back here again, or Cyberstorm's back here with some bikes. Beacon down here. Uh, Firehawks are flying over the top. They can see it's there, but what, what can they do about it? There's only three, which means they can't actually destroy it. Oh, there's four here now. And he goes for the double shot, and he does. He gets it, but the shield saves the War Factory or the Sonic Repulsion field. Oh, geez, that's not cool. That's not cool. He gets one click as well. Andre's here with Bike Buggy, but uh, Hydraulic doesn't care. He's just going to go for the counterattack, and now they're in all sorts of trouble. There's a Purify here, but again, these times, there's too many of them. They can shoot over buildings, and that's going to be into that Purify. That was expensive. He's just going to pull back because he doesn't want to fight these obelisks, which is really a good idea. There's a Mammoth tank here as well. He's just going to destroy what he can, even taking out the power, which is nice. Uh, we've got some battle markers over here as well. It looks like Andre really has just cleaned that all up with the one click and, of course, the Firehawks. Uh, I guess these guys have to worry about get, getting bombed out of the game, really, because, again, they don't have really any tech. But they do drop that War Factory, so Andre uh, feeling it now. Has a little bit of his production cut off. He's got no War Factories actually with that gone, so uh, he might have to do something about that. Panic does have one Mammoth Tank out, and oh, he's got an Obelisk. I was going to say, if he sends that too far forward, uh, Hydraulic could turn around and engage and probably take it out. And he is going to turn around and engage now. Panic doesn't actually pull back. He's just got it on the move order, and there's just too many times here. So you can see that Mammoth Tank takes a lot of damage, but ultimately... It's just no support. Scorpion tanks down here now. Battle marker up there. It's not much. Uh, the Scorpion tanks moving through. This tip core is done by Andre by the looks of things, which is going to be really nasty here for uh, for Hydraulic. He's got Scorpion tanks. They don't get any attack upgrade, but they have Dozer blades already done. And Panic is just losing more harvests here. These guys are really just taking it. And now uh, Andre's forced to defend with his bike buggy. And there's bikes here from Hydraulic as well. Uh, not Hydraulic, sorry, Cyberstorm. And again, he's really done this on a, a very low tier army. Obviously, he has tier two if he's got Dozer Blades. Might even sold, have sold it off. What's happening up here? Nothing much. Uh, again, he's just pulling back here. And even Andre's starting to lose harvesters now. The bikes are moving through. These guys desperate to defend. And Panic is going to lose another harvester. And there's even rifles in it that just get completely destroyed. There is a Mammoth tank here. That's going to be pretty hard to dislodge. But again, it's moving out away from the base. It kind of needs to be back here for protection. And it's going to get overwhelmed now. So again, a very high uh, armor unit there and good damage output. But again, when you send it out there solely, it's just going to get focused. There is another Mammoth tank here now causing some problems. Panic really needs to stop just moving these right into right away from his base. Yeah, he's pulling this one back now, selling off some structures there. Mammoth tank now pulling back, not a lot of units firing on it, and he is going to be able to save that and does a de decent amount of damage in the process. There is infantry here from Andre, and that's going to be the end of these guys. There's a behemoth rolling across the field as well. Again, I'm not quite sure what a behemoth is going to do in this situation. It is a very open and flat fight. Aircraft, tanks, aircraft and tanks and fast attack are the name of this game. Again, all sides have been pushing that. I'm not sure what an artillery unit's going to be able to achieve here for uh, 
for Panic. Few bikes sitting idle. Looks like Hydraulic has fielded up this, this area here. Again, only just placing that ref down. He must have been pretty crippled there uh, from what happened. What's happening over there? There is a structure being sold. I'm not sure if the Firehawks are responsible for that. Again, I'm not sure where they've gone. There are a lot more Scorpion tanks moving in here now, so they are moving into this field. More Harvest is going down. They're not going to quite get that one. He decides to pull back, which is probably a good idea. He'd lose too many, I think, to uh, to justify one more Harvester. But the, I think the Firehawks are on their way back. They do have Stratifier. They don't have hard points, so they may have uh, destroyed that uh, refinery. Again, uh, odd choice considering there's some other tech structures here, although maybe the tech center wasn't actually there before. Uh, beaconing up here, Hydraulic doesn't have that much. He's got a Titan Wolf Army, which is nice. He can definitely take on anything those guys have on the ground, but he doesn't have AP ammo. He's, does, he's got no Railguns, no Adaptive Army. He's got no Tier 2 at all. He just needs time to recover. I'm not even sure what he's building. Where did his harvesters go? I'm not sure where his harvesters went. Firehawks are still bombing, but it looks by, by the looks of things, he must have lost his harvesters. Oh, no, it's just, there's a few here, but again, maybe there was an attack I missed, and now there's a lot of infantry out by Andre, so maybe these guys just weathered the storm long enough. Oh, cloaking field goes down, kills a ton of rockets. That killed so many rockets, and that's going to allow him to get in here for the crush. Um, the Black Hand Troopers uh, don't even care about that cloaking field. They can, they can cloak all day, but... Um, the, the Scorpion tanks now are just going to be able to crush them. That infantry army got crushed pretty, pretty uh, significantly. Again, $3,000 uh, blast on that. There's three Mammoth tanks here. He might want to watch out. These Scorpion tanks have not got a chance against these guys at all. They're going to rip them to pieces. And uh, again, he's going to try to pull back. Again, reverse formation move. Not a good idea because it's making all the tanks move really slowly because the heavily damaged ones can't move as fast as the, the fully held ones. Even Fnatic's coming out here. we got Battle Markers down here. It is a... No, something's, something's happening. I think uh, Hydraulic needs to... Or Cyberstorm needs to move his uh, units over there. There is a Marv here, so that's what Hydraulic's been doing. Uh, he actually has a Marv. And he's got two Grenada squads in it as well, so that's interesting. And look at all these stealth tanks. No tip core. Is it on the way? No, he sold his... Uh, or he may have lost it, sorry, to the Firehawks, perhaps, because they are coming back from a bombing run. Uh, stealth tanks are here. They don't have tip core, which, of course, is going to hurt. But, again, he's got, what, three, four, five... He's got seven of them. He's got seven, and these Firehawks are in all sorts of trouble. He's trying to find them. Can Panic realize that they're on the way? Yeah, again, he beacons. He's like, hey, there's still tanks here. They're probably going to camp my field. He's already here. Nice work to target the power plant because it's very easy to destroy. And, of course, it slows down everything in their build. Everything to do with their build gets slows down. Slows down. Takes out that one. People not got a chance of cleaning those guys up. Hydraulic's still just harvesting this, allowing him to recover quite nicely. He's got two harvesters over here now. And, again, the bikes are coming through. And it's going to be bikes versus uh, stealth tanks. Not something you want to see. Again, the bikes are much more cost-effective. And, again, they have tip course. So they're just going to smash these stealth tanks. And one stealth tank does actually escape. Looks like all the bikes actually got cleaned up. So, uh, again, a trade there, but I think Andre's probably going to be happy with the trade. He may even get the last stealth tank here if he's if he's uh, doing okay. No, he's not going to quite get that one, unfortunately. But, again, Hydraulic just marvelling this whole field. Again, a lot of Mammoth tanks out, considering there's no railguns or anything like that from uh, Panic. More bikes coming out from Andre. These guys need to make sure they clean these fields up. Still harvesting over here. Even the Tibbs actually regrowing. Again, oh, these, these Firehawks are causing a lot of problems. We have three veteran Firehawks as well from uh, Panic. So, they've been going back and forth all game now causing a lot of problems. Uh, it's going to be Titan versus Titan here, but again, there's a lot of infantry here. They're probably not going to want to engage that. And uh, the uh, Wolverines do have AP ammo, though, so again, he's actually got enough of them, really, to just overwhelm this position. There's no base defenses queued, which means I don't think he's going to be able to save this uh, this MCV. Uh, Hydraulic might be... Uh, I mean, Andre might be in trouble. What's happening down here? Marv is engaging all these units over here, and look at all the bikes. They don't have Tip Corp, but they're going to hit the rear armor. That's very nice. Meanwhile, these guys destroying the MCV. There's two pretty big battles going on. Emp goes down on top of this Marv. The Marv is probably going to go down, but all the bikes clean up the rear armor and uh, hit, killing off the Behemoth here. Meanwhile, the MCV doesn't go down. The MCV stands. It stands, so it's going to be okay. Meanwhile, something happening down there. It looks like more refineries being bombed by Panic. The Marv is down, but there's a heroic bike here from Hydro from Cyberstorm. I don't know why I keep trying to call him Hydraulic, because uh, Hydraulic is a Steel of Talons player. And again, he's forced to pull back. He looks like he lost all his Wolverines. So uh, unfortunately, he's trying to build some more, which is nice. The bike's now moving over here, but again, no tech center from Cyberstorm means no tip core. He really could be benefiting from that, but he's got so many bikes here now. He's just going to go in, and again, he needs to watch out for these charged particle beams. That's not a good idea to just rush uh, full on here into this, but he does try to skirt around the back. There is a little bit of room here, trying to kill as many harvests as possible, and he's going to get a few. Oh, tip core just finished. Tip core just finished. The fire was like, no way, I'm getting out of here. And uh, meanwhile, these guys are just going to roll through this base. There is a time here, but again, these bikes can just completely overwhelm it. There's just not enough here. And the bikes are going to move through the main base. This other time here is going to be like, he's going to get a kill. But uh, again, he's going to go straight down. 
And uh, these guys in all sorts of trouble. Meanwhile, battle markers down here. More units going down. Did a firehawk drop. A firehawk did. The two firehawks went down. I'm not sure what destroyed them, but uh, two of them have gone down. Uh, meanwhile, the bikes are moving through this base. These guys are going to be okay. Andre does hold his MCV, and there is uh, infantry units here to, to defend against the bikes. Did the heroic bike make it out? Yes, the heroic bike is still alive. He's going to move around here now. And oh man, pretty intense. We have this uh, Steel Talons arm here, and Railguns and Adaptive Armor are both done far out. I didn't even notice he had a tech center. Uh, but he's got railguns and he's got adaptive armor and that's the end of Andre. Andre is down. Panic looks like he is already GG out. So that's going to be the end of that game. And whoa, geez, that had a lot of shooting in it. But uh, nonetheless, uh, some crazy opens. Everyone decided to rush, which is something you don't really see in a 2v2. Not every single player wants to get in on the action there. But if we check out the resource graph, look at that. You can see Cyberstorm was cranking away up there, uh, way ahead of the other guys. Hydraulic pretty low down, but he did manage to overtake Panic. Surprisingly, Panic, the bottom there, just got harassed so much. And Andre there, of course, doing most of the bulk work, but uh, Panic with his firehawks just decimating the, uh, the backside of Cyberstorm and Hydraulic. You can see it really showed because they just had no tech to speak of and it took forever to get their upgrades in. We only saw Tim Core at like the 16 minute mark, you know, because of the firehawks just causing problems, but Panic, he just lost too much and he couldn't get a big army up, he could only get a small amount of units. And Hydraulic did manage to survive and do a lot better as a, as a counterpart uh, to say, but Cyberstorm and Andre really driving that game home. And uh, that was definitely well done by all players. That was a great game, really enjoyed watching that on Forgotten Forest. But anyway, uh, I'm Green Zero, hit my one million view mark, hell yeah. That was gonna be Cyberstorm and uh, Hydraulic versus Panic and Andre. Again, let's have a look at the team stats here. It looks like team team one, which is going to be uh, uh, hydraulic and uh, cyberstorm. We've got 282,000, just 200, let's say 210,000 from team two. So I got $70,000 more, which is you know significant at the end of things, and that's really why they managed to roll over at the end of the game there. But very good game by all players. Hope you all enjoyed that video, and I'll see you all next time.